So the review this week is we mentioned it last week. We weren't we didn't have an opportunity to like really get into it because we'd only just started wearing it. But Raf and I were fortunate enough to get the 4.0. Uh, probably not quite ahead of um, the entire world, but we had an opportunity to get it definitely before you know. I'd say like 95 percent of people based off when I posted it. People were like, "How did you get one?" Um, I've been waiting for mine for ages. Well, look, so have we. Um, and now it's definitely time to give it a review. So I thought what we'd start with um, before we get into the app and the new features is go into just the the physical hardware. So um, the first part that is, is worth talking about with the 4.0, uh, I think a lot of you guys listening to this have the 3.0, is it's smaller. It's not thicker or wider because I tested that maybe slightly thicker off the wrist in terms of height but it's definitely smaller yeah. overall and I would say I posted a photo it's probably around it's about third two thirds smaller. yeah yeah a third a third smaller 30% smaller um, which I think doesn't really matter for you and me but I do think people with really small wrists like a lot of the girls will enjoy a lot more because sometimes you see girls and it's like hanging over yes, the side yeah, dude, the, for a lot of girls it's bigger than their wrist yeah yeah which is crazy um, and then uh, so that's so that's the size of it. Now the next part is the strap, obviously, which is like the part that interacts with you the most. I would say that they have made a far better band than all the 3.0s. The 4.0 band, the new Super Lux, whatever kit, yeah. Yeah, whatever they call it, is um it's much softer, so it, it does doesn't get as stiff as the other band. And I find for me, it's like less noticeable on hugging my wrist. Mm. Um, however, I would like to see uh, how this goes in the underpants. I haven't put it in yet, but I was thinking, ah, uh, you know what? It's still quite big. Even if I put this inside the Whoop underwear and, and was wearing it around all day, I think I would still notice it. Like if you sat against a chair and pressed up against it, you would feel it's it. It's on your lower back. Or it's somewhere. It's yeah. somewhere. Yeah, on the, on the glute. I don't, know, I don't know how they do it. I haven't. Well, I haven't got the clothes yet. Yeah, so it's just like in the waistband. There's just like an opening. You just slide right. it into that. And I'm keen to try it. Yeah. Well, I, I am sick of having it on my wrist. Mm. I'll be frank. Yeah. Um, just because I've just had it on my wrist like coming up to three yeah. years now, you know? So, it is it is time for it to move somewhere else. But I imagine in some scenarios, you're just going to have to move it, mm. you know, on the rest. I wouldn't mind the bicep band potentially as well. Like sometimes I'm going out, I wear more like oversized clothes so I could just put it up my arm and just have it under there under the shirt I wouldn't mind that too much as well but sometimes just having it on the wrist it's just like gets a bit tired so I think they've noticed that and that's why they've got yeah. the whip close um, and then I think the the actual clip and buckle is improved it's not like life changing but it doesn't catch your skin as much it's not as hard to actually like pull it open sometimes that old one is so hard to open yeah so that's like a general kind of physical improvement yeah the the disassembling and unclipping and reclipping and adjusting is like so much easier now before people used to dig their hands yes. in and like get so knives hard. and like try and crank it open, They're like it's stuck, it's stuck. Now it just it opens really easily. And then really the, uh, the the battery pack, I mean, it's pretty much the same. Only difference is really now smaller. It's, it's waterproof, yeah, and it's, smaller. Yeah, it fits it because it's yeah, yeah. But same thing. About third smaller. Um, so it doesn't matter as much with that, but yeah, the the waterproof thing it's actually helpful. Had I think happen. it does charge slower though. I think it charges mm, slower. I, I think def it's definitely no faster, and they don't promise it is. And the battery life is no better. Yeah. The battery life of the Whoop is no better than it was before. Yeah. I think because they've waterproofed the battery, the way that it, it's more like of a wireless charging situation. Mm. Whereas before, because it was had the metal, the exposed metal could go in the copper or whatever, could yeah. connect into the Whoop. It charged a lot faster. Because I think it was like a 90 minute charge before. Now it's, it's like true. a few hours. Yeah. I think that's because think right. they because they waterproofed it. It actually slows down the charging, which is a little bit annoying, but... Um, that's just the cost of waterproofing. Obviously, it'll improve in, in the 5.0. Uh, but when it comes to the hardware and the accuracy, obviously, now they've built in more lasers. Mm. So, I think there was two lasers. Now, there's four. Um, I think Whoop is definitely more accurate now. Yeah. Definitely more accurate. I used to get... My strain used to get register on some really strange things. Yeah, there was definitely times you'd look at your strain and you go, ah, oh, something's gone wrong. Yeah. I was like, how have I gone through this day? I haven't worked out. I barely moved. It actually has five LEDs. Five LEDs. Five LEDs. You can only see three. I think to an infrared. Right. Okay. Uh, so I and and a few people that have got the four point that I know that have typically massive strain scores, all their strains readjusted and come down. Yes. So I do think strain is more accurate now. Which you know at first you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not the strain king anymore. But it's 
better because it's more accurate overall. And, and more accuracy is ultimately what you really want. And one of the ways you can know is that if you just go start an activity and you look at your heart rate now, like mine is definitely more accurate. Sometimes I would just look at my heart rate. I'm like, that's just not what my heart rate is right now. But right now, my heart rate is is accurate. Yeah, show the camera. 74, 76. That's, yeah. that's what it is. You know, whereas lots of times before I would get on, I'm like, oh, it's just not that. Yeah. So it, it was not as good as like if you had a polar strap. Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely think the, the 4.0 has definitely improved its accuracy on strain. Recovery and sleep is always a tough one. I think it was already, already mm. pretty accurate. I don't think it was actually... I haven't noticed any different. No, nah, I think to where I'm feeling, how I'm feeling and typically what I see on the app is, is still pretty accurate. Mm. Um, but the strain has improved dramatically. Yes. Dramatically. And I'm not getting these days where I'll finish a day. And like you said, it's been a pretty stressful work day, but I haven't, I, you know, maybe got like 6,000, 7,000 steps in, but I mostly did work all day. And it's like, sometimes I get in, it's like 15.2. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't even work out yeah. today. I just, I barely moved. But now I'll get heaps of days where I'm like eight, nine, seven. I'm like, oh, okay. I yeah. Agree. I think on the whole strains have come down. Yeah. But that's 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 better. More accurate. That's better. You yeah. don't want to feel like you've worked really hard and burned heaps of calories when you haven't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like even my calorie burn throughout the day is lower now as well, which I think was also true. Because some people would look at my, including myself, would look at my calories burn. They're like, how do you burn so many calories in a day? How do you burn 4,000 in a day? I'm like, oh, I'm just a beast, bro. Yeah. The truth is, I don't <laughs> no, think it was just that accurate. <laughs> <laughs> just not that much of a beast. Yeah. So like my average calorie burn now is when did we get the whoop? I'm going to try and give people an idea of this. So, 2,000, uh, 2,700 last week, week before, two, I don't think that was that accurate. Yeah, so the overall calorie burn has gone down, I would say, probably by, you know, I will say it's a little bit harder because I had have had the ankle injury for like three weeks and so I haven't been like doing any cardio really. But I think on average, it's probably dropped like three, four hundred calories a day. Two, three, two to four hundred calories a day. I would say mine is pretty similar. You know, the one thing, so it also gives you overnight now, it gives you blood oxygen and skin temperature. I haven't got skin temperature yet. Neither of you is like haven't had it on long enough. Yeah. Um, but is, that one, is that what they're saying? Yeah, you, it, it takes longer. Skin temperature can be useful because obviously if skin temperature goes up overnight and you have like a really warm night, it's often when you're unwell. Mm. And then blood oxygen, I don't really see that much benefit of it overnight unless... It'd be really good for someone like me if I'm going into altitude because I typically, yeah. typically struggle with altitude and then it would be very, very helpful for me. Mm. Um, but it's also got this feature for it can wake you up. So you can like set an alarm with Whoop and, it oh, will, yeah. and it'll like wake you up on your, like it, like based on how you're sleeping. And um, how does it wake you up? Vibrates, right? It vibrates. The, the Whoop vibrates. Yeah. Not the phone. No. Yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting. I think uh, silently and gently wakes you up depending on your sleep needs. Yeah, okay. No, I think they've uh, definitely improved the device overall. I think they've taken a lot of the things that we didn't enjoy about the 3.0 and uh, have put in the 4.0 to their credit, uh, which is great. Um, ways it could just be improved. Well, one of the things that's actually done really well as a software update is they put uh, in your leaderboard. So those of you that have the Whoop, I'm sure you're a part of some different leaderboards. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're a part of the, the podcast one. Uh, which we have, I think it's like 150 people in the in the podcast leaderboard. Everyone's got their own little Whoop groups. But now Whoop gives you a monthly summary, I believe, in your chat because you now have a chat in that group. But it gives you a monthly summary of you know who was the strain the highest, who slept the best, um, who recovered the best. Which we started doing anyway for locker room clients. We pulled the data ourselves, but uh, they they've also doing it automatically for you now, which is really cool. I think that's a great way to increase engagement with the product. Strangely, we didn't get one for the Marmoset project. Otherwise, I would read it out, but we didn't get a summary. Oh, they didn't give us a summary. No. But they did for they did for our other groups. Yeah. Maybe it's just based off how much engagement because mm. there's, like, there's not that much chat in the, the Marmoset project uh, group. But overall, I think uh, Whoop is definitely improving. How they could improve in the future, drop the fucking price of bands, for God's sake. Yes. They're so overpriced. Um, you... The problem is, right, they've hit this price point where it's so much more expensive than the monthly membership, which is like crazy. I know obviously they make really good margins on the bands. Obviously, that's why they're like a $3 yeah. billion company. But what you really want is people... Now, our locker room clients, because they just have so much cash, they just buy all the bands. But the average person, people like us, we're not buying loads of bands. Yeah. If you had a really good product, if you hit... Sorry, if you had a... You have a really good product, but your price points off because 
most of the people I talk about, besides locker room clients, they're not buying new bands because they're so overpriced. And they would love to. They would love to. Every week would be like, dude, I got a new band. A band should cost 19 20 yeah. to 25 dollars and you get excited they cost 70 dollars you're always mixing it up with your 180 dollars yeah, for another ridiculous. band people want to get people what you should have is people when a, new, a bunch of new whoop colors released 80 percent of your ba- uh, membership base should be buying two or three of those colors oh i got the green one and this one and i'm mixing and matching and, and, and it's a fucking band it makes you more engaged with the product right and the band's age and stuff but to cop 75 dollars yeah. for a band i'm like that's like the price of a fitbit yeah, it's, out- and it's outrageous. It. It's fucking stupid. It's, it's So it's just, it's pure greed, honestly. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Well, it's like buying a nice t-shirt. Yeah. And it's just a band. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's way too expensive. Yeah. It's way too expensive. Look, I understand the Lux ones and stuff because, you know, it's like, here's our premium band, but don't put it $180, $150. Put it at 100 bucks. you know, so people are like, I'll go and get one nice band. You know, I'll buy a nice band for Christmas for someone. But like, you buy two bands, you're spending $150. It's like, but you've got a green and a red band. <laughs> so, so so overpriced and they get sweaty and they get yeah. dirty and you throw them out like it's just they've really got the pricing wrong on bands I think it's it's not good and it's 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 making people less engaged with the product yeah and it makes people just wear an old band for too long and yes. it's loose and then it looks tatty and, the, the and it looks doesn't shitty. really work very well because it's too loose on your wrist and yeah. you're like oh I just can't keep dropping like $150 on bands yeah so that is a huge drop. Should we just clip this part of the podcast and then we'll just post it on like Instagram, LinkedIn and then tag Whoop and they'll just like sort it out Hopefully. right from the people but if you're buying bands at overpriced prices, you're incentivizing them to keep putting the price up. So stop buying the bands. Everyone now listening to this, we're going to put a full strike on buying bands. All right, full strike. No more bands. I'll Stick probably, with the ones you got, I'll and then end they'll up getting a band. Then they'll, <laughs> then they'll panic. Um, yeah. So, but overall, uh, besides the pricing of the accessories, I don't think they could improve much more. I mean, it's obviously going to get more and more accurate in the future. Um, I would love to. Yeah, I would love to keep investing in wearing it. And so there's got to be... Because obviously, there's going to come a point where you're like, oh, I don't even want to wear this anymore, right? That's when you that's when you cancel your Whoop membership. So anything they can do to keep people wearing it, I think is 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 the key, which is why I'm whinging about the price. But bicep bands, in your clothes, stuff like that, that's, that's yeah, when they need to keep working I think they're making the moves. I think that you know it is an upgrade with 4.0. I think you could have hoped for a bit more, but what I'm expecting is that, say it's like another two years, right before Whip 5.0, they'll bring out more stuff that you don't know this is capable of with software updates. Yeah. So like, oh, now it does this. And it can do that when they do the update. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm hoping. The hardware is ahead of the software right yes. now. The software is going to catch up and it'll make the hardware better. And in a better. year's time, there's all this other cool new stuff and yeah. more accuracy and just you don't need to change the band. So we're hoping for that. Yeah, and anyone who's still holding out for time on the Whoop, I still don't think it's coming. No, I don't think they're interested. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about time. What's that? Nine weeks. No, 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 sorry. The time, like the time on the band. Yeah, yeah. Like you're going to look down your Whoop and see the time. There's so no like, screen. It's not going to happen. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's it for this week. Remember, our, we did, we put out our final YouTube video. Is it out? Our final series, Behind the Project's done. Yeah, Behind the Project is finished. Uh, we did a 14 episode season. Um, so season one is out now. You can go fully binge it. It's on Netflix, on Stan, on Optus Sports. You can find it all there. And but mostly find it on YouTube. If you can't find it on Netflix, it's probably just like something wrong with your Netflix. Just go, to, but, go to YouTube. Um, on YouTube, the My Muscle Project. Uh, watch season one of Behind the Project. And guys, as always, we'll speak to you all next week.